I always does and plan on it, always will for a long time to come. Uh, I was raised in South Dakota on the Cheyenne River Sioux Reservation. Uh, my mama's Lakota and my dad, he's Seneca and Dutch and a bunch of other stuff, Norwegian and other things. Uh, but anyway, to, uh, I'm, a, I'm a mixture of everything. Uh, I am a true American. <laughs> I'm, I'm everything. But uh, I was raised on the reservation, and, and it wasn't a good, good time to be on the res, and uh, things were pretty rough. And one of the blessings that I, I got when I first came here was I saw the school. And I saw the foundation of the school and the, how it was run, how it was established. And as a kid growing up, I, I grew up really rough. I grew up in a lot of, uh, a lot of violence, a lot of hard things. And uh, every day was something. And I always thought if I could be in a school that I didn't have to fight, if I could be in a school that I didn't have to watch the corners when I walk around the corner, when I be in a school that I wouldn't see people doing stuff that are bad, real bad. But I didn't. I didn't have that. So I decided when I was a young man, I was going to have a big family. I said, someday I'm going to have a big family. I always thought I was missing out because I only had two little sisters, and they weren't much good. I mean, they couldn't haul hay. They couldn't do big, big fence posts or nothing, you know. And they were way younger than me. But I... Uh, had eight children and them kids uh, spent their spent their school time in this school. They didn't see the things that I saw. They didn't know the things that I knew. They didn't have to experience the things that I experienced, and I praise God for it. I made up my mind. I remember standing up there watching and listening to the school and how things went. And uh, I made up my mind, I'm going to make my stand for my family right here. And I stood. And all the kids have been graduated and out of the, or kicked out. <laughs> well, Gary didn't get kicked out. But he, he didn't finish right. But he got his GED and did pretty good. But the thing is, as we go through life, we make decisions. And the greatest decision I ever made was on the 18th of August, 1980, when a, a drunk, a person who was a total disgrace to his mom and dad, I saw that Christ had paid my sin debt on that cross. Amen. And I saw that, that I didn't have to live the way I was living because I didn't think I could live anything different because of where I came from and because of who I was, who I was in my family. I saw, I saw that this is the way we are. I'm a wager. That's the way it is. Wagers are going to fight. Wagers are going to do this. Wagers are going to do that. You know what? I, I, God gave me a different pattern. I can be like Jesus. Amen. I can walk following God's word. I can live a, a life that, that, that is not a disgrace and not a horrible thing for people. God showed me that he could work in my life. And you know, many times we think that we are the way we are and we can't change. We just are fools because we believe that lie. Because the devil wants us to believe those things. The greatest thing that this country could have and is in the greatest need that this country has, that need is, is not, not religion, not money, and not oil and not only the stuff that they say they need. It's Jesus Christ is what they need. They need to be born again. They need to be saved. If we're going to see this country change or a difference made is when we as Christians catch fire and we start inviting everybody we know to come to church. And we start inviting them to come to church and, and, and take, take part in this thing called salvation that is free and it's for everybody. All they got to do is believe. For God so loved the world, they gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him, whosoever believeth in him, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Say, so it can't be that easy. That's why God did it. So it would be easy. Jesus did everything we knew that needed to be done. We just need to believe that he did it for us. And understand that he did it for us because he loves us. And if he loves us, then we ought to love who he loves. He loves everybody. Bitterness and hardship and all this stuff that goes around on most places and reservations, all reservations, is bitterness and, and attitude. None of it's necessary. When Jesus comes in, he gives us the spirit of a sound mind, of power, and of love. See, when we, when we trust Jesus, he comes in and he makes a difference. You see, too many that come to church and say, now lay me down to sleep prayer. And they don't change. If Jesus Christ is our Savior, if we've been born again, we should live a life that's different. Amen. We should live a life that's pleasing to God. Right. We should be trying and desiring because none of us are going to make it. We're not perfect. I mean, I'm sure not perfect. The other day when I went in for heart surgery, I had um, three heart, ache, heart attacks that weekend and uh, had another one on the, on the table while they was operating. And, uh, you know, some things is different for some folks. I don't know what's got to be different about me, but I, I got to do everything the dumb way, the hard way. But there I am, they're working on me, and they got four stints to put in, they got halfway, and they apparently stopped. Because when I started getting off that table, because I'd had it, and I told them, I said, I've got, a, I've got some pain here, boys. I said, and it's hurting pretty good. How long is it going to take? Because I can't stay here very long. And I waited and I waited and I waited and I thought I waited. I'm about at the end of my rope, boys. I said, we better do something. And I started getting up off that table. They started scrambling around there. <laughs> You're not supposed to get up off operating tables, I guess. But God said, let's go another mile. Let's go another mile. We got here tonight. Let's go another mile. We've done what we can for this day. No, let's go another mile. Get on that phone tonight and invite people to church. Thank you.